Hey, what does eye health have to do with your brain health? You're going to soon find out from a really special friend of mine, Dr. Thomas Lewis. Dr. Lewis, welcome. Jonathan, great to be here and talk about eye and brain. Yeah, we're going to really blow your mind, no pun intended, and we got three tips for improved brain health. Coming up right now. Okay, we're going to have a lot of fun today because this is something that is really not talked about enough. It's not invasive, not painful, and it's a very important insight, again, no pun intended, that your mm -hmm. eye health has a lot to do with what's going on with your brain. And here's the main thing. Most importantly, nobody wants dementia. And if you understand what Dr. Lewis is going to talk about when it comes to eye health, you might just be able to know that you're at a greater or lesser risk for dementia Absolutely. years ahead of time. Dr. Lewis, what the heck am I talking about? The connection to the eye, eye to the brain, the connection is that the same tissue. The eye is actually an outcropping of the brain. They're the same tissue. The retina in particular, the photographic plate that measures light and converts it to a signal our brain reads, that's all in the same organ. It's all part of the brain. So what's going on in the eye is very much what's going on in the brain. And again, I mentioned to you before when I said it's non-invasive, or I should say something that's not risky in terms of a medical procedure for you to check things out, and it will give you a lot of insight into what's happening to your brain. Dr. Lewis, let people know what on earth do they have to do to discover stuff that's going on with their eye. Again, it's not painful, right? Well, the problem we have, Jonathan, I'm trained by a Harvard ophthalmologist. He was practiced at Harvard Medical School for 45 years, and he really was the guy who was not just looking at your eye as an isolated piece of tissue, but your eye as part of the whole organ. And, you know, it's very clear that the eye resides, a sick eye is in a sick body, and a sick brain is in a sick body, and they're usually together. The beautiful thing is the eye turns up pathology that you can see 15 years before you really detect it in the brain. So you get a 15-year head start on realizing if you're heading down a path of neurodegeneration or any other neurological condition, the eye tells the story. So it's simple. We don't have any fancy, it's not iridology, it's no fancy methods we use. Eye pathologies, cataract, macular degeneration, dry eye, glaucoma, are all pathologies that can manifest in the brain later in life. In fact, glaucoma, by some researchers, they call it, they call out gla glaucoma, Alzheimer's disease of the eye, and they call us, uh, Alzheimer's glaucoma of the brain. So it's completely interrelated. Same pathology, same exact processes. And keep in mind, dementia is developing 30 to 50 years ahead of time. And these eye issues, Dr. Lewis, same idea. If we can just start making this connection more and reveal these issues way ahead of time, it's going to be much easier to avoid these problems later on in life. Well, you know, I have a personal testimony. My dad died of Alzheimer's 16 years ago, and that's how I got into the Alzheimer's space. I was looking at it earlier because, you know, there was some interesting things in his behavior 10 years before that. But he had glaucoma. I don't have the exact timeline, but it was at least 10 years before his first Alzheimer's symptoms, he had glaucoma. So if we had known that, we would have made some informed decisions. Dr. Lewis did an amazing presentation for me and for all the people who watched the Alzheimer's and Dementia Summit. It was a summit that I hosted many years ago. It's still available. You can get it at alzheimersdementiasummit.com. Don't miss it. We talk a lot about how all of this is interrelated. Taking care of brain health is about taking care of the rest of the body. Don't focus just on the brain, which leads me to the three tips to improve brain function. Dr. Lewis, what's number one? Well, tip number one is your brain is mostly fat. In fact, its dry weight is 65% fat. So if you're not feeding your brain healthy fats, you're not feeding it what it's made of and what it wants. So healthy fats would be number one. Fish oils, marine oils, avocado, things of that nature. 
Yeah, Very good if, for the brain. And if you want, I'll add, to eat some of the animal products. It's so important. We're not just talking about a vanity thing or a luxury thing. There really is a biochemical reason why we should be going for grass-fed beef. So important. Or any other animal products with good quality fats like the cage-free, pasture-raised eggs. The bottom line is I'm talking about quality over quantity. So important because we're avoiding so much toxicity. Right so many imbalances in that food mm -hmm. that if we ingest that, it's no wonder eventually over time, our brain is gonna get really sick if we're not really being focused on getting the best quality fats we can in anything, plant-based or even animal-based. And, and marine. Marine is the primary thing that I recommend people do. In my family personally, we take cod liver oil every night. Good old cod liver oil, it's fish oil on steroids because it has all the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, E, K, D in it. So it's really a complete and balanced thing for your brain in terms of supplements. I hope you've got a pen and paper and you're taking notes here or you could certainly watch this over and over again. We're up to tip number two for better brain function. Dr. Lewis, what have you got? Well, tip number two, is improve your insulin sensitivity. Most Americans are insulin resistant. Don't measure your fasting glucose or your A1C, measure your fasting insulin. Why the brain? This is how big the carotid arteries are supplying blood to the brain. The brain uses 25% of the oxygen that leaves your heart that's oxygenated. It uses 10 times more oxygen than any other tissue because the brain is relatively small compared to the rest of our bodies. So vascular diseases are brain diseases. And the number one cause of vascular inflammation is insulin resistance. So a diabetic would be have a lot of vascular inflammation, but we're all in that continuum. If you want a healthy brain, bring your insulin resistance down. That is so huge what Dr. Lewis is talking about. Please keep in mind, not just for diabetics, pre-diabetics, if you just feel that little shakiness going on, you know you've got blood sugar issues. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lewis is talking about insulin resistance. We get it, bring it down but all the spiking going on with blood sugar right. levels going up and down, we drive ourselves with sugar and then it crashes, the insulin levels, they spike and then they drop. You've got to look into this more. You want to avoid that roller coaster ride because as Dr. Lewis just said, that kind of roller coaster ride is very, very stressful on your whole plumbing system, mm -hmm. where all that blood flow is. And if that's going on for 20, 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. it's no wonder we see diabetes going up and up and up. How true is that? You know, I tell my participants that some of the folks I work with don't even have high school education. I said, take the tip of a pencil and rub it on the back of your skin. Now, if you do that for a few seconds, no big deal. But what if you do it 24-7? You're going to eventually rub it raw. And really, the insulin level is sort of the pressure. So imagine now you're rubbing it with a higher pressure. What's going to happen inside that tissue, inside those vessels? And that's what we're really concerned about. It's a 24-7 inflammatory insult to the vessels. The brain is 10 times more vascular than other tissue average, on average. So it's 10 times more impacted. That's why we're seeing not just more Alzheimer's and dementia, but more depression, more mood disorders, more all kinds of neurological and neurodegenerative conditions stemming up. And it's a vascular first, neurological, neurodegenerative second. You can see how I'm bringing all my friends into this to give you the real reasons, mm -hmm. the very specific reasons why lifestyle matters more fruits and vegetables, better high quality food, eat organic food. I know you get that already, but I'm making these videos to support why that stuff really matters. It matters. And, you can, and you can see all the topics I'm doing. Hey, before we get to tip number three, as I always like to remind you, please make sure you're posting your comment down below. I wanna hear from you what you feel we might have left out. And don't write yet because we got a third tip and maybe it's that one, <laughs> but post your comment down below. Let me know, let all of us know in this, on this channel, in this community, what is it you're doing to improve your brain function? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's been healthy your whole life and you feel like it's because of ABC. 
let us know. Right. That's what this channel is all about. It's giving great information with my friends like Dr. Lewis. And for you out there, you're as, just as much an expert in your own life, what's happening to you successfully. And we want you to share that so other people can benefit. Makes okay, sense. enough of that. Tip number three, Dr. Lewis, what have we got for people? This is a biggie. Pay attention. Tip number three, brought to us by no other than Aloysius Alzheimer's, the, the disease named after him in 1907, that microbes and other infectious species that can stimulate inflammation in the brain is a major cause of Alzheimer's and other, dementia, and other dementias. So it's underappreciated generally. Just think about this. You're walking around, you have a little gum disease, little bleeding gums. You feel fine everywhere else. But underneath, your bone is you know, being eaten away and your gums are being eroded. What if that same infection or a similar infection was in your brain in that vascular tissue, just like you have vascular tissue here, and it's eating away at your neurons? Could you eventually see how that could contribute to Alzheimer's disease? So the key thing is get tested. Don't you know, don't use the standard of care measures because they're waiting for you to be really sick. A white blood cell count as low as 6,000 may imply that you have a chronic infection and may lead to a vascular disease that then affects the neurons in your brain leading to a dementia. And it's so important what you're pointing out about knowing your numbers, right? It's not just one test, but hey, you know, oh, yeah. where are you relatively speaking from one test to the other? So if you do see that white blood cell count going up, mm -hmm. I mean, there has to be a reason. Look, the bottom line is these infections really do matter. Common sense tells us everything Dr. Lewis is saying makes sense. Mm -hmm. Infections in the mouth, how close is that to the brain? Other toxicities, poor oral health. I made a big deal of this back in 2015 in doing a whole summit on that as well mm -hmm. and how it relates to brain fog, of course, concerns about dementia, chronic fatigue, autoimmune disorders, you name it, from just having a sick mouth. HolisticAllHealthSummit.com. It is still available. All the experts explaining how issues in the mouth do relate to brain function and so sure. many other things as well and how to clean them up. But it is so important what Dr. Lewis is talking about. We're talking about Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr, right. so many infections can generate this brain fog. And if it goes on long enough or you're old enough, of course, your friends, your family, your neighbors, everyone starts saying, oh boy, he's got dementia. And you get labeled that if you go to a conventionally trained doc who doesn't appreciate how to uncover where these infections are, you could be misdiagnosed. Sure, it seems like a brain problem, but it really could be an infection infection throughout your whole body that if you could drop that load, if you could become less infected and more clear-minded, you'd maybe have no concern about dementia at all, right? You know, Jonathan, it's so true. And one of my favorite, you know, headlines that showed the complete misconception of what this disease is all about, when the actor-singer Chris Christopherson was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And then about a year or two later, they said, oh, no, he didn't have Alzheimer's. He had chronic Lyme infection. And I'm saying to myself, will someone, just one person, one writer, make the connection that it's the Lyme infection creating the neuroinflammation, creating the dementia, rather than saying, oh, they're completely separate and disparate? You know, we, we have to realize that we're a whole, complete, integrated organ, and the Lyme inflammation and the infection and inflammation can affect our joints, but it also can affect our brain, just like periodontal does in both areas. I'm gonna steal a line from Dr. Lewis. A sick brain is sitting inside a sick body. Mm -hmm. So this is not a judgmental thing. Hope you get the message loud and clear. Take a bigger picture look at what's going on with you. Check out some of these tips, plus I'm sure many of the others I hope that our community is suggesting down below in the comment area. Outstanding. And Dr. Lewis, I can't thank you enough. Thank, thank you so you, much Jonathan. for being here. All right. And thank you for being here as well. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.